can say definitively that religions are all bullshit. Welcome to Brainstorm. We have the explicit tag for a reason. This is a base level argument to a higher level morality. I get paid to science? Two science as much as one can science. What the hell was my point? Trigger warning. Uh, to those listening live or to our patrons, welcome back. For those listening weekly, welcome to the Shift to Reason Radio, the brainstorm production that tries to educate and inform. We'll take current events and important skeptical topics, and we'll try to analyze them critically. We're live on brainstormradio.net every second Friday, and today is February 2nd, 2018. I'm still joined by Angela. Hello. Lisa. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Did I, did I beat her? Did that was I beat so her? Awesome. Actually, I'm sorry. It's just. I suck so fucking bad. Wow. No, you Brandon. don't. It's hello. <laughs> well, you don't even compare to Angela. And of course, the always amazing Dave on sound. I got nothing. Do it, Dave. Give, you, give you us a channel. Hello. The scar give us a sexy hello. Come on, Dave. Hello. <laughs> Dave's got a pretty good voice. Too. He's that got a good. pretty good voice. That was awesome. Uh, eh, eh, he says eh. he's being self-deprecating so i think the only thing we have to worry about today is some religious nuttery all our all our topics today are religious i didn't get a, i didn't get a script where's my page <laughs> we don't all see the script because it's on your flip phone it. where's the teleprompter it's just really tiny right. <laughs> nope not there <laughs> i'll uh, uh <laughs> I might have to stick you with Renee's story real quick, but <laughs> let's, let's play that religious nuttery bumper. Cornerstone, this might be new to some of you. Scripture says that even our righteous deeds are as filthy rags to God. So even the good things that you do, even things like feeding, feeding the hungry and, and clothing the poor and taking in widows and orphans, as nice as those things are, if not done from the place of obedience to and a relationship with God, are completely worthless and disgusting to God. If you're not daily walking in a place of relationship to God, then the news that we have to bring you is that you're on your way to hell right now. So how do you like that? Could you hear me, face palm? <laughs> I heard you. It's always nice to see a new face have to listen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Where's What's the source on that? That's actually from the movie Christ Core. With, uh, it sounded like metal. Newman. <laughs> the source yeah. is the Bible. <laughs> yeah, the source oh, is the Bible. That's it, right. It's true. Yeah, Oosh. that's that is true. Biblical actually, douchebaggery. Being a good person doesn't matter. Worshiping God matters. I fail. <laughs> yeah, ditto. <laughs> I suck at it. Sorry. All right, we'll we'll go right into Angela's story because uh, sexiest voice goes first. Sexiest voice yes. goes first. Yeah, that that we'll say that's why. <laughs> I don't know. My my sexy voice is the topic these days, but that's not my story. I love you. I also love you. So, okay, according to ChristianNews.net, scroll, damn it! A school district in Indiana has refused a professing atheist group's request that it dissolve a pastor-led program during the lunch period after investigating. The matter and finding that no religious instruction is provided during the offering of the class. So Freedom From Religion Foundation sent a letter to the school district who was like, guys, you can't have this elevate program. You can't do it. Two pastors are doing this at lunchtime. And they're like, we can do it because it's voluntary. Right. It's, um... it's totally okay. But... It's not allowed to be perfect. You can't do it at school. That's that's the thing. You can't, the, according to the law, you can't do it 
at school. And and so the Christians are like, freedom from religion, screw off you guys. <laughs> Take it off your website, but they won't do it because this is, it's it's not okay. Um, which is kind of, I don't know. It just, they're trying to spread the, they spread the bad news and they just don't understand because this is their belief system, how it's not okay to indoctrinate people. Right. Sorry, where did you say this was? Indiana. Hmm. And, and the FFRF, they, uh, did they actually file a legal papers for this or did they just send them a cease and desist as far as i can see they've only sent them a letter saying okay quit it um and the there was a response given back to them saying no it's volunteer it's voluntary we don't need to um we know we don't need to stop it it's interesting i might uh, i might be mistaken but it seems to me that there's been cases in the past where voluntary programs, if held on school property and led by a school official, still had to be stopped. Like they still couldn't do it. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm not 100% familiar with the U.S. law, obviously. Well, it's, it talks about um, but, uh, a school's assistance of this practice constitutes a utilization of the tax-established and tax-supported public school system to aid religious groups to spread their faith, according to the U.S. Supreme Court's uh, ruling in the McCollum v. Board of Education case from 1948. Okay. So it's there's that's a lot of that's a long precedent. Right. It seems <clears throat> seems relevant. Yeah. And they've like FFRF has successfully litigated cases in which a public school district allowed religious groups to teach in the public schools. Hmm. Not this specific case, but um, yeah. So it's there's a there was a lot of information to wade through just because there's the two different perspectives from a secular website and a Christian website, right? And then there was the actual PDF of the letter that Freedom from Religion had sent, right? So it's it's just there's so much bias, mm. so much cognitive well, on dissonance. The, yeah, on the Christian website, it, would, it it seemed when I looked at it to be very like, bitty, bitty, we can't do our Christian yes. stuff on Christian school. <laughs> exactly. La, la. Exactly. <laughs> like, no, they just don't realize that like because they they're they think that not like they're not preaching, they're not doing this stuff, but parents complained several parents had complained well then then that's it right yeah isn't it one would assume one <laughs> like, would assume like uh, uh to my understanding the ffrf often doesn't get involved if they don't think they have a case exactly so they there's got to the, be something to it they went to the trouble of of sending a two-page letter to them right and i mean they made a public statement as well so they have to have a I think they have to have a c- complainant withstanding, mm-hmm. like so. Like there had to be a parent who complained and wa- was willing to take this to the next level, yeah. Before they could send the letter, so. And I feel like there's a, I don't know, some religious people va- value secularism. They actually see the value of yes. of having public institutions that are not religious because, you know, who knows when that you know. Because they're afraid of Islam. Well, there's that, yeah, or you no, know, but not necessarily, but even or even other sects of Christianity or whatever, right? right. Like, or 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 even maybe more rationally, just they respect that other people have different views, and and that's it. So you don't you don't have to be an atheist to believe in secularism True. and believe that in a public school you shouldn't have. Um, some, Actually, cause, cause, and it's a very yeah. exclusion. You know, like you might end up having a situation where you know a kid maybe who is Muslim or who is whatever Mormon or whatever or child of an atheist, or whatever, who now feels like they can't participate in this kind of thing. So I mean, it is. Yeah, there's a good argument against it, and and and. But I do feel like in the states there tends to be a definite knee jerk reaction against any sort of move towards secularism when it when it affects christians oh you know right. this is our this is our religion and this, this is, is my you know, playground yeah, yeah. it's interesting that they that even though their country is 
ostensibly secular they ish <laughs> ish, <laughs> ish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just saying it's like oh, an unspoken yeah, exception it's founded on religious light. freedom right ever Definitely. ever creeping towards theocracy yes good just saying god doesn't seem to secularism doesn't seem to be as a value like as a little bit of irony there. There. <laughs> yeah. i have all these religious exclamations that i say yeah yeah it's the kind of like the cultural like jesus kind of stamp. fucking christ you know heavens to in the bible Although, i bet not many devout people would use the f like would say fucking in there well it's a little known middle name right like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great. impressive yeah. it survived 2000 years in that exact yeah. spelling too well the old <laughs> yeah. aramaic it was a fucking ah you learn it's something been changed Thank a bit. You, yeah mm. my personal favorite is sweet zombie jesus <laughs> or sweet one. zombie baby jesus oh yeah the baby jesus is obviously this period jesus. i've always been really <laughs> partial weird. to god damn it i don't know yeah it's it's very simple it's very yeah. uh but but it's often evoked like a reaction from people. Yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> somebody somebody said God damn on the news or on the radio what? earlier this week. Wow. They were they were talking about changing the anthem wording. Oh right. <laughs> and somebody was just like, God damn, blah 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 government government I guess government funds. We government, really? mention that, that like, Yeah, that is worth noting. The uh <laughs> the Canadian anthem. It, it <laughs> they didn't remove the God stuff. No, but they did change it to a gender neutral. All of what is it? What did they change it to? Us? They changed of, it from our you know, all, all our, our sons, sons command. command. In all thy sons command. Instead of that, it's not going to be in, in all, all, of, all us of us command. Yes. But I really, really want the Canadian please so bad. <laughs> yeah. Well, then that removes the God, right? Yeah, like instead of instead of God keep our land, please keep our land, and then it's still <laughs> fine for religious people. They could be ple- asking God to please keep right, the land, right. but I'm just saying, please in general to the humans, and yeah. everyone's happy. And I also agree with Dave's uh, change of to on, on uh, yeah on native land, yeah our home on Was native it you land. That in on CBC, no, there was another lady that did. But Dave I, I, just mentioned it in our planning group, I think. Yeah, I do yeah. call there often, though, but nice. You do? Why do I never hear you? I don't know. Maybe you're listening at the wrong time. Or, or else they read my Facebook comments. Bad audio on the phone. Oh. They can't all have his setup. <laughs> Maybe not. It's <laughs> true. Maybe not. <laughs> but we're slowly but surely making progress on the national anthem front. Yeah. It's funny that that's, that was that came into place in the 80s in, like, Yep, the traditional lyrics in the No, 80s. I thought that was in the... <laughs> right. the latest, I thought it was like one of the world wars when they were... The, the latest iteration was like in the 80s. The Suns thing was the I 80s? I believe so. I don't know exactly what was changed what in the 80s, but they mentioned that during Blue Sky. Yeah. What the fuck is the show you people are on? It's CBC, it's on CBC. Radio 1. I listen to Radio 1, but not... It's between the 12 and 1. Oh, I don't listen that's to their, it their That's their people, call-in show. People listen to radio. At I lunch. don't understand this. No, I listen to, I listen to CBC <laughs> in the car, like commuting, but I... But at lunch, I'm like... When do you having, listen to podcasts? I listen to it when I'm uh, running or cleaning the bathroom or, or vacuuming. So like or not 100% driving. of your time? No. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm on a podcast. <laughs> yeah. The only time I'm not listening to a podcast is when I'm on a podcast. I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I really... Sam you know, Harris releases really listen, a lot of stuff, it. dude. I got <laughs> shit to do. <laughs> right. He's a busy guy. And then with Dan Carl, I mean, those are long shit. I mean, like I got <laughs> my two boyfriends are difficult to juggle. Uh, yeah. If only Isn't one of them three? wasn't the worst. Isn't three Carlin Isn't the worst? Harris? So much. Carlin Harrison who? Who else? I don't listen to this podcast far now. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody who's on this podcast listens to this podcast. I do I, now. I do. I do a little bit. I used to listen to this podcast before I was on it. Now right. I'm like, not anymore. Now they're now they're just got. Now too your voices are annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Except mine. <laughs> I'm reading. Sir, I shouldn't say that as you're taking a sip of your beer. It's just gonna spray everywhere. <laughs> that's, that's totally a fair statement. I, I read. I read the phone book to Lisa before she falls asleep at night. Oh my god, so. I would love that. <laughs> Angel, that, would, that, that I wouldn't be able to sleep benefit? then. I would just sure, please. I wouldn't be able to sleep. I'd be too turned on. I'd be like, oh, you still have a phone book? But, <laughs> no. I could read something I mean, else. Nobody has a really phone book. Really mundane. Pages.ca. Oh my God, so funny. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. So, true story. My boyfriend works at the phone book. 
He writes what? computer code that makes the paper phone book. What? what? I know. And I was like, oh, the phone books are in my lobby of my building. And he's like, oh, those were released uh, six weeks ago. I don't know why you, you haven't received them. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, fuck, you know way too much about that <laughs> shit, dude. Like, is, that, is that what he does all year? Yeah, like he's been working there for like years. What, like it takes him a whole year for him to like update the whole thing and then. Like he works there like other fucking people. He's not the only one. Like there's a whole wow. fucking community of How humans. How is that not out of business already? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> they have an online thing too. Yeah, they but have But it's a, like a thing. And he says it, he's, he's worked app, like a t- kind of different the place. He says it's the most complicated programming he's ever had to do. Oh. They probably have some, they, like, like they sell the spaces and there's marketing and they, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Oh. He says they, words. He has meetings. He looks stressed. I don't understand. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> it's all very he's important. A, he's like, I have a real job. I'm like, oh, sorry. All I do is treat cancer. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but if you didn't have a phone book, you wouldn't know where to call to get the cancer treatment. Yeah, I just look at Except on the internet for like everyone else. <laughs> <Except> for, <laughs> but Grandma Millie doesn't know. Yeah, she doesn't to, know. It's like your boyfriend gets money from people like my dad who pay for ad space. There you go. There you go. I need to have my extensive pizza menu in the phone book. Like, I need to know in front of me. Because Little Caesars is too complicated. Yeah. Well, I know. want to know what kind of pizza there is and if there's any deals on. It's not like and it's if online I can get or a, Like a feast for four. For As like an occasional phone book mm-hmm. user, the loading time is a lot better. Well, yeah, you have a flip phone, dude. What do you want? Okay, like, you <laughs> probably use phone books. <laughs> <laughs> probably use pay phones from time to time. Do we have any more pay phones? Yes. There's one in the corner of Winnipeg and, and Victoria. I They're mean. in a lot of places. You don't really want to use them. When I was, when I was in my early 20s, I used, I had a pager and I used pay phones all the time. I used yeah. to have a pager too. I have a pager now because I work in a hospital <laughs> and that's what you still fucking use. Like that's it's, insane. It's, I have, it's like this fucking big yeah, and it dangles huge. off my lanyard and hurts my neck and I carry it around. I mean, then once in a while when I don't bring it, everyone's like, I paged you and you didn't answer. Like, Fuck off. Like, <laughs> that's a, that sounds like a sexy bit of flair. What? That is the a pager. sexy bit pager. of flair. It is, yeah. No. Have it's... you have you watched Office Space recently? Uh, not recently, but I have watched it enough nice. times that I know. I know. I knew the reference. I knew the reference. Flair. I knew the reference. Good. They don't encourage flair at a cancer center. Like, oh, you have <laughs> flair. Like, they're like... Oh. Although, although they do give me shit if I forget to put my lab coat on. They're like, well, the patients yeah. won't be reassured that they're getting great care. You're like, well, yeah. does a lab coat really mean that? They're like, to yes. the patients it does. Like, okay, sorry. It actually does have like a pseudo-psychological effect. Apparently. That's what I'm told. And I'm like, I fucking forgot my lab coat. I'm you're sorry. more inclined to, actually, I have a lab coat and you're more inclined to trust a person who wears one. Well, that's fine, but whatever. They're surprised. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. They're it's actually just how it is. easy to get. Huh? I actually have Lab one. Coats. Oh yeah, I you, used to wear one in the studio all the time. Really, fun. really? I for real because I was the Do doctor you, of beats. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you you were, you yeah, you were, Dave. Yeah, you were, Doctor Dave. Oh, Dave. My, and my initials are Dr. So it works. Dave. Oh. Dr. Come on now. <laughs> Dr. I'm not kidding. Capital D, capital R. <gasps> Dave's now the king of cheese. My, my clients loved it. They're like, oh, I man. bet they They're like, did. you got to wear that every time. That is fantastic. That is fantastic. Awesome. All right. I'll work uh, to a podcast one of these times. So you'll, you'll be. You, you yeah. have to. We'll I'm all, we'll all love it. It'll be. Oh, so, so uh, I'm, I'm officially changing you to Dr. Dave. Dr. Dave. <laughs> the amazing Dr. Like Dave. The amazing Dr. Somebody Dave. fucking call me Dr. Something Something sometime in my life. Okay, it's only seven Dr. years something. of my right. goddamn Dr. life. Dr. Glass. Also Dr. Lisa. That actually sounds pretty cool. <laughs> to call you Dr. Glass, that sounds pretty cool. I just read like a like, like, like an alternative enemy. history novel, but like it was like a steampunk thing and it was called Dr. Glass, but Dr. was like D-O-K-T-O-R and it was, I was, it was an Ooh. awesome an awesome novel. Did you identify with it more because it was Dr. Glass? Well, my, a friend of mine got it for me. She's like, I don't know what it's about, but I got it for you because it's amazing. I guess, yeah. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> so funny. That sounds like your villainess, uh, villainess moniker. Yes. Yes, Dr. Glass is a villain in that novel. I won't say any more because it'll reveal too much. Yes, <laughs> it's a really good book, actually. You should check it out. It's a good book. All right. Let's, uh, let's let Brandon do Renee's story if he read it fast enough. 
<laughs> I didn't go through all the minutia. I always read my stories as you guys are talking. In the <laughs> well, well, you're coming fine. up after it's the ad breaks. So. I already read it. I already read. <laughs> I swear to God, work. I did. I'm going to try to read this with uh, as little as contempt as possible. Mm. I'm sorry for those who actually believe this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> as little as possible is all we can really ask for. We'll start with the headline: <laughs> Noah's Ark discovered again. Oh well, yeah. again. It was discovered once already. I uh, don't want to keep count. Okay. <laughs> so, so some people who've read this before have heard about Mount Ararat as the his, historical air quotes for those listening at home <laughs> place where the ark landed. Right. So I'll go into the article now. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to read this verbatim because it's a little over the top. Essentially. In 1959, Turkish, a Turkish army captain discovered an unusual, unusual shape in the mountains. Uh, the smooth shape, larger than a football field, stood out from the rocky and rough terrain at an altitude of 6,300 feet. I'm guessing that's above, I'm hoping that's above sea level because it doesn't say here. Okay. <laughs> but suffice to say, that's a long way up. Uh, they found it in what's, what used to be the historical kingdom of Armenia, uh, regarded as the first Christian nation. Uh, later on, after in in the course of research, they actually took aerial photographs and they took them and they they they, they cited names here for this. I think for me reading it cites it for the reason of believability. The okay. person they took it to is uh, what was it, Doctor Brandenberger, who is credited for site for uh, for seeing the Cuban missile sites. Okay. So it's like he did this, then did this. Cool. So that gives them credibility. Right. It it strikes me as a little bit of the out, out, out of your field thing, but we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Suffice to say, it does have a boat-like shape. It's, <laughs> it's like That's a, not sounding too promising, though, really. <laughs> from above, this thing looks like a fat canoe. Fat canoe. Cool. <laughs> That's also the name of a new sex move. Uh, <laughs> huh. What an urban okay. dictionary that might be a good band name. That's something we got we got to look up now. <laughs> anyway, of course the uh, <laughs> I'm going to quote Dr. Brandenburger here according to the article. I have no doubt at all that this object is a ship in my entire career. I have never seen an object like this on a stereo photo. I of course you've seen a lot of apparently prehistoric ships. It should be noted that people had actually been to this site and they actually got to look at this stru- the structure. Right. And it's composed of rocky outcroppings in this shape. Okay. And they, they're the people in the article and the peop- the, some of the investigators posit the idea that it's uh, petrified wood. Now, I'm not, inter- I'm not perfectly familiar with these time scale petrified wood, but depending if you go with the uh, young earth style and the whole 6,000 year thing, Wood doesn't petrify that fast. Right, yeah, that seems pretty far-fetched. Yeah. They find some coincidences over the course of it where uh, they measured it out, and it is 300 cubits long. And it, Of course. What's yeah. a cubit? It's, it's an old Egyptian term of measurement. I believe it was the distance between your, and an outstretched hand, it's the distance between your pinky and your thumb. But I think it was actually standardized based on the pharaoh at the time, kind of like how the foot used to be. Okay, interesting. That's actually something I did not know before. So, actually, there's a <laughs> to segue a little bit. There's an international society of standards and measurements. Okay, they keep in a vault a foot, not a literal foot. <laughs> or, and you a, made it sound like it was a literal. And, and, and point <laughs> and other points of measurement. They keep these things in vaults and they remeasure them on a. Is that right? On I think it's a every five years. To basically check the, to make sure they're still a thing. Interesting. Yep. Um, I tell you, we used to work in a metrology lab, which is the study of units of measurement. Um, so that's that's no longer the standard for the, of length. It, it, it's actually defined in terms of the speed, the, the, the amount of distance of, the, of photon will travel in a certain period of time. <laughs> right, right. It used to be that. It's much more precise. Yeah. The the uh, definition of mass though is still like a specific chunk of metal in in France. Is that right? Yeah, the grand coeur. The big kilogram. The big kilogram? Le Greco. Hmm. <laughs> Canada also has their mass metrology standards. 
Every country has to have them once every like five years. They all get together and compare their maps. <laughs> I'm fucking I'm still, serious. I'm, I'm still not fat. I'm fucking all these scientists they have like these cases and they're like you know, chained to them like a fucking drug dealer and they go and they show anyways. Continue. How big is yours? <laughs> How big is yours? Three hundred cubits. Science Thank is you. dirty. <laughs> I'm reading what's true now. Everybody's measuring against. Yeah, the but building. technically, Le Grand Cas is the, the the standard, right? So if that thing loses like a few atoms, it turns out it's a bit lighter. Technically, it's a standard. Everyone else has gotten bigger. <laughs> Just saying. Sorry, continue. So does size matter? If you're a metrologist, <laughs> yes, sure it fuck does. does, man. Sure they have fuck does. All this stuff. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this is why context matters. <laughs> I'm gonna digress a little bit away from this. So was it actually the Ark? (laughs) Yeah. It looks like what we would consider a boat. However, what I'm going to digress So is it petrified wood? It's not. They claim that it's the, they claim that it it has, but that doesn't necessarily mean that a a structure (laughs) made of wood or coincidental trees in this area became, happened to show up in the pattern. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can't pronounce. Angela's the word. asking questions to detract from the fact that she's crying from laughing too hard. <laughs> and then <laughs> laughing too hard. <laughs> every once in a while, my eye just randomly stings. As just it fucking stings, and then it waters, and then it looks like I'm crying. That's why you you can't laugh that hard. I can't laugh that hard, and I can't get <laughs> nervous or uncomfortable because then it just fucking happens in the worst possible situations. I just wanted to segue into the idea that um, I don't, I can't pronounce the word, but it's the human tendency to find patterns in things uh yes metrixing is it mm, matrixing no i want i want to say pareidolia but that's usually faces and stuff it's areola <laughs> <laughs> well i have it on good authority there's at least four i miss jonathan <laughs> but oh. the thing is um the boats, writ- boats at the time that the Bible was written and the story put down would actually, in for the uses that the Ark was was cited for, would have more likely to have been circular uh, rather than boat shaped. Right, they wouldn't be boat shaped the way we think of them no. now. Yeah, and that's that's the thing about seeing the patterns, like in the article, we think it's, it looks like a boat. You take somebody back four thousand years, it doesn't look like a boat. Right. It looks like a seed pod, maybe. But they claim to have found artifacts in the course of this, and they claim to have found like petrified wood. And they had to go to the whole. Oh, they were so advanced because they found something that's like rivets. It's like they found something that probably looks like rivets. So, so where did they find it again? Uh, it's a. It's called Mount Ararat in modern Turkey. Okay, and this happened in 1959. This okay. is the this most recent. We're just hearing about it now. Well, it's been played with a few times. <laughs> Hence the, the <laughs> Ark found again. I'm being an asshole right now. Sorry. No, you're being hilarious. Yeah, that's... <laughs> wow, slow, eh? That took a while. <laughs> a while? A while. <laughs> that's the word whole and wild put together. A while. <laughs> It only really works when Angela says it. Oh, like geez. everything. Fuck yeah. all y'all. Okay. That's right. I can't. Story of life. It only works. Oh, wow. It well, only, wait, nope, it only works when wild. Angela says it. Yes. But yeah. They, That's the name of this episode. The thing is, they've been, they've been only, finding. <laughs> there you go. It's not the first time I've heard of artifacts like this and like how the the Ark of the Covenant has been found like three different places. I think the the best claim is Ethiopia. So, okay, so my from my perspective, I mean, and I mean, we know that no global fl- flood actually happened, right? True. But there are regional floods. Large yes. scale, yeah. So is, is it possible that at some point they uh, – I don't want to say that. is it possible. That's such a broad question. But it seems like that at some point some of these boats that they supposedly find could be from regional floods, even if it was something legit. Oh, course, yeah. You know. Of course. Like the big problem is the fact that I think in the region they haven't found evidence of floods as high as this would have to be. Right. Like you can you can look back in your geological record and say – 
here's this layer of, of set of, of, of organic debris. Right. The, this is probably how high the flood went. This is 6,300 feet up. That's, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 I think it's a lot of, I think. Uh, There's no from, other evidence of a flood that high. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's pretty goddamn high. It's pretty high. Top of a mountain. Yeah. The use of goddamn is offending me, Corey. Good. Is, it, <laughs> <laughs> is there like a critical mass? Are we, are we limited to a certain number per episode? No. Okay. The limit is infinite. It's not really a limit, well, is it? Yeah, no. It's You get a goddamn. There's gotta be a you physical get a goddamn. <laughs> Everybody get a gets a goddamn. There's gotta is, be a physical limit of how many times we can say yeah, it. Yeah, the limit is three hours and... Yeah, that's true. Um, three hours. Or is it just three hours? Yeah, it's yeah. just... Oh, well, uh, plus bonus content. Plus bonus. We could we could bonus. actually sit here for six hours. Yeah, I mean, saying, <laughs> just, just saying obscenities. <laughs> We should. We should. There's no Can reason we, why we shouldn't do is that. that. Is that like the April Fool's edition of the podcast? Oh, my God. It, 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 let's be honest. It's every edition of the podcast. That would be amazing. That would be that amazing. That would be so much we fun. We actually have considered doing for an April Fool's episode like a reverse I like where the <laughs> where like we became very religious. Yeah, we we act very religious and very uh, uh, devout. If we play the keyboard, we could do hymns. We could do hymns, uh, and we I, could I can't we could we could, uh, we could report on Christian yeah. news like we believed it, yeah. or or we could talk about like cool a lot new of therapies. <laughs> cool new therapies. <laughs> cool new therapies. We're trying. What what stones? Yeah, we're which, carrying in our pockets. The, the proper stone or combination. Other yeah. places. <laughs> yes. I'll wait till after the the your news item is done. Gee. But I wanted to I wanted to bring up a a local version too. Right? No, but, sounds good. Please. Uh, okay, so let's do a quick ad break. We're actually running a little bit behind here. So yeah, let's do the ads. If you like what we're doing and want to help us keep the lights on, go become a patron at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. You can hear the bonus half hour that we record every episode and get a shout out when you support the show. Become a patron for just a dollar an episode at patreon.com forward slash brainstorm podcast. Or you can support the show by ordering a t-shirt, mug or other gear from our store at cafepress.ca forward slash brainstorm podcast gear. If you can't afford to become a patron or buy gear, then why not give us a rating or write a review on iTunes or Stitcher? Every rating makes it easier for people to find us. Thanks for your support. The Hardcore Skeptic Examines is a bi-monthly documentary-style podcast that includes interviews, research, and commentary from your host, Corey Johnston. That's me. As the host of the Brainstorm podcast, I've spent the last three-plus years trying to spread critical thinking and skepticism while having fun. This project is intended to look at some of those same topics covered by Brainstorm, but a bit deeper. With the long intervals between episodes and the long format, I'm hoping to provide good information that educates as well as entertains. Check out my Patreon for more details at www.patreon.com slash hardcore skeptic or follow my Twitter at hardcore skeptic. Hi, I'm Justin Clark, the host of Reason Revolution. It is a weekly podcast where I often have a guest, often in the secular and atheist movements. We have thoughtful and engaging conversations. I also do news and commentary from the atheist and secular humanist perspectives, as well as answer listener feedback. We are on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Go over there and give us a subscribe and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash reason revolution. All right, we're back. So let's go to Lisa's story. All right. I read my story before the podcast. <laughs> you may all applaud. Is there an applause track? Not anymore. We used to have the sound <laughs> keyboard thing, but actually that's not true. But uh... he, he, Dave's not ready. I, 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 he was too shocked by my having that. <laughs> he didn't respond properly. Uh, it's okay. There, there you go. Oh, you're not hearing it over there. No. no. <laughs> the audience hears it, but we the, don't. The audience can hear it. It's in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is a, <laughs> an article on patheos.com entitled, Man Flips Truck Five Times, Says Jesus Told Him to, quote, Let Go of the Wheel. So, okay, it's uh, January 26, 2018 by David G. McAfee. <sighs> 
So there is a Tennessee man named Chad O. England, real name. Uh, recently, <laughs> o, o apostrophe England? No, o, o middle name. Okay. O middle name? Shall we? Well, that's his middle initial. Should we? Uh, should we speculate what the middle initial stands for? Oliver. Ogilvy. Oliver. Ogilvy. Oh. Ogilvy. My, I, I thought Oliver too. <laughs> It's almost definitely. Over. So we got Chad Ogilvy England. He recently survived an accident in which his truck flipped an incredible five times. When questioned by the Tennessee Highway Patrol, he told them he accidentally caused the accident, or sorry, intentionally caused the accident because, which really isn't much of an accident then, because no. uh, Jesus called him and advised him to let go of the wheel. So I guess two witnesses say say they saw England speeding down the highway when, for no apparent reason, he left the roadway on the right side, um, and he was he said that he was uh, being called and was traveling to bow before someone. Um, he also stated that he was not driving, but he was behind the wheel. Um, so the article kind of interprets him as maybe having taken that Carrie Underwood's genius advice of Jesus take the wheel maybe a little too too literally. For sure. Um, but actually, it turns out that um, God, quote, wasn't the only substance he was abusing. Uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh, so the police said he was, when they got there, he was running away from the vehicle, carrying a jar and speaking gibberish. Um, they found six grams. Gibberish? Gibberish. gibberish. Fuck you. <laughs> It's it's gif. Fuck you and your soft G's. <laughs> Gibberish. <laughs> Do you want me to finish reading yeah, the article that I totally go read ahead of time? <laughs> go ahead. You're such a gurk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, according to the report, uh, they found six grams of pot, 0.6 grams of cocaine, a pipe, rolling papers, a third of an empty bottle of Crown Royal, a small empty bottle of Crown Royal, and several cans used of, uh, for huffing. Um, so he was obviously under the influence of drugs. Jesus so- likes to party. Yeah, I mean, and this is, Tennessee, this is Tennessee, so I'm actually kind of impressed that the cops didn't just take his his um, explanation of, of having just done it because Jesus told him to. Um, he was apparently arrested and charged with DUI first offense, felony possession right. of Schedule 2 for resale, possession of Schedule 4, and possession of paraphernalia, open container, no driver's license in possession, failure to exercise due care, no registration in possession, violation of implied consent, and no insurance in possession. So... Um, yeah, and so the article finishes. Maybe if this story took place a thousand years ago, we'd be reading about the tales of Chad England in Sunday school. <laughs> that Maybe. was the article. It was all about this dude who decided that to literally let Jesus take the wheel. Here's the problem with that. It's okay. I'm pretty sure Jesus well, never I... took driver's school. Mm. Yeah, so even if he he's an unqualified was driver. real, he's an unqualified driver. Yeah, you wouldn't want Jesus taking your wheel, I guess. It's just not a good idea. It's like... Um, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't the same story happen a few years ago? Like there was a woman I'm who did the exact same the thing. First time. <laughs> like it's like it's just cyclical. It comes up in the news every like once every... in a while. There's somebody who just lets go of the wheel of their yeah. car. It's like Fuck. Jesus. Like, that was Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I don't think that this guy said Jesus. I think he said God. Oh so, wow! Well. You know he didn't. I don't know. Just what does God need with a steering wheel? I don't know. He just wants to take your wheel. He just wants to manipulate you. Mm. <laughs> this is a little close to home. <laughs> he wants to fuck with you. Well, not God, technically. We did talk earlier about how sexy God is, so. <laughs> sure did. <laughs> yeah. Fucking Abrahamic God is hot. <laughs> There's a reason that the the lines from Fifty Shades of Grey and... and Christian music lyrics. The semi-intellectual guy. Are uh, like the same Musings thing. podcast just uh, gave us a soft G, hard G. <laughs> a gift? Yeah, with the gibberish. <laughs> <laughs> Gurk. They're Gurks too. <laughs> Gurk. Love it. <laughs> 
That's fantastic. That's fun. I could watch You guys that. come over that here was... and give me your hard G in person. See that how sounds that works. dirty. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess so. Give me it that way. Your hard G in person. <laughs> it's a hard G, though. Fuck it's you. A, that's the least I've heard Angela. before. <laughs> no, but I, I like it. I, what I said. I like when I give you the hard G. <laughs> I like it when you give me the hard G. I... <laughs> God, you guys just keep naming this episode for me. See, we like Angela likes it when Lisa gives her the hard G. There is an am, there. That is that is it. That's it for you. You'll see say, say that slowly. Angela. Are you or are you guilty? <laughs> um, I'm jewelty. No, jewelty. If it's juice. <laughs> oh my lord. How we doing, Dave? <laughs> Are you a guilted lover? <laughs> yes. You're, you're you're doing great. <laughs> great. <laughs> nice. <sighs> All right. Let's move on to another story. Let's do it. Okay, so I've got this story from the Saskatoon Star Phoenix about uh something we've actually covered before with the a uh, case that has come back into the news from the Public School Division of Saskatchewan fighting the government and the Catholic school division, uh, because there is only one school in the Theodore area. And it is now a Catholic school. Back in 2005, the Theodore school was on the list of rural schools that were going to be closed due to an amalgamation of school divisions. And some local Catholics all petitioned the government to uh, bring it in as a Catholic school. And, uh, yeah, they succeeded. And so approximately for the whole time, ever since then, there's been a court battle saying, you know, you can't just have a Catholic school in an area. Uh, and recently a judge whose name I can't actually pronounce, Lay, uh, where I don't even know where the name is in my notes, but <laughs> it's L-A-L-A-Y-H. Lay. Lay. Just lay? Okay. So Judge Lay... Lay or lie, either. If you're essentially, listening, Judge Lay, we're sorry. <laughs> yeah. Essentially said that because because uh, it was a violation of the Charter of Rights of by funding a non-minority faith school, the judge essentially said that because non-Catholics were going to a Catholic school, that this violated the Charter of Rights of Freedom. So... Uh, uh-huh. Because there's no alternative for non-Catholic schools within the area. Um, So this, like I say, we covered in April of 2017. And the rule helped kick off the One System Sask movement. Yes. Which uh, we also covered. And uh, argues that uh, this doesn't provide... uh, uh, One System Sask is a, a movement to eliminate the separate school system. In Saskatchewan. In this article, though, the government and the Catholic school division, it was ruled that they are supposed to pay $960,000 to cover the court fees and other expenses associated with the trial. Who's the uh, plaintiff again? Uh, The public school division. Right. Yeah. So essentially, all of this money is just going to cover court fees. Yeah. At, because they're fighting for the ruling, right? It's a little bit funny that the that the school division is essentially suing the government, and and a yeah, yeah, the government that funds it, yeah, and it's a very strange setup. Like they're three separate entities, but at well, the, the same Catholic time, division is pseudo independent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is why it's not that we don't pay for it anyway. The the division of these fees is like seventy for the seventy percent for the government and thirty percent for the uh, the Catholic school system. I think the ratio, should, at least for me anyway, I think the ratio should be the other way around. Yeah, I'm not really sure how it should work because it seems really weird that we're even having <laughs> just like the public school sue the government and like you said before, like. Well, I could be wrong, but I think the Catholic school board was the initial defendant, and the I'm pretty sure the provincial government came in as a co-defendant after the fact. Right, and and the the provincial government still continues 
fighting for like they insist on appealing this again. Yeah. And they they seem to think that this will go all the way to the Supreme Court. I I honestly don't think that that it will get that far. Well, I, don't I think, think it should. I think that yeah, like the next whatever this next level of appeal should have should uh support this ruling and that should be the end of it. It does seem pretty obvious that you shouldn't have to send your kid to a religious school. Yeah, like it is, no it's, kidding. It seems kind of like, well. Even if they have no choice but to add a bus system to this area so that, that they can get. That was going to happen anyway. Right. Yeah, like originally, right? Um, since I'm the new guy here, has any has, have any of you gone to a Catholic school? I did. I did not. I did not. I did. I, I did as well. In Calgary. Did you two, the, the two of you, like, can you cite, like, something distinct about the Catholic school system? You had religion class. How often did you have that? Every day. Every every day. Religion class. And it's funny because I really? went to, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I went to French good. immersion and um, all of our classes were in French except religion, which they really wanted to make sure we understood. We sang O Canada every morning and then we said Our Father, our father every day. Um, we had religion class every day. We had... Um, we had assemblies were always religious. Always started with a prayer, off very a very religious related music class. We would sing religious songs. Um, so no Beatles. So I mean, it kind of like it, it, it depends. I mean, there was a period there where we were like, for example, where we were allowed to celebrate Halloween, and then suddenly we weren't. Right, as an example, like we weren't allowed at some point to have Halloween costumes and stuff because it That's was interesting. I mean, I mean it's, like, you know, it's kind of depends on how serious your principal was and how what the school board was doing. You know, <laughs> like you know, my mom said when she went to the parent teacher or not sorry not uh, when she went to the student council or the parent council meetings, they would have a prayer at the beginning. Um, I remember I had a friend. There was a few people always who weren't Catholic. I had one friend from a Christian religion, but they didn't believe that Mary was divine. So, like when we said the Hail Mary, she had to go stand outside in the hallway, and it was it you know all sorts of weird, random, bizarre shit went on. <laughs> like I mean, I probably wasn't that different from a public school, but like there was. It sounds like you lost at least a little bit of time to the procedurals. Oh, for sure. And and my mom, I remember her being so pissed off when one time when like. I had like really good grades, except I only had like 77% in religion or something. Oh. And it kept me off the honor roll and she was so pissed. Oh. Not at you. me, not at me at the school. <laughs> Thank you for your indignance, Lisa's mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mom's sort of, she's, you know, she's one of these spiritual but not religious. So. Ah. Kill me now. You know, Lisa, just because you don't believe there's a God doesn't mean there is one. You know, mom, just because you believe there's a God doesn't mean there isn't one. What? Mind blown. <laughs> it's interesting. We got... On, Sorry. On one of the first interview or one of the first episodes where you were on and you, you said something similar. Did I? Yeah. And oh, and we had a comment on our YouTube channel. Really? <laughs> oh, was that the one bad one we got that time? No, it no, was okay, a, a different bad one. It's like... It was somebody saying like, <laughs> oh, just because you don't believe in it doesn't mean there isn't one. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> that, you missed the point of what she was saying entirely. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It's mostly oh just my impersonating gosh. my mother. Just to loop back to the case a little bit. I just want to cite. No, 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 no. Remain derailed. Remain <laughs> fully derailed. What's wrong with you? I don't know exactly what your, what your geographical disposition of your listeners is. But for those of you who have or may not have heard of Brad Wall. Oh, we, yeah, we've mentioned him before. He, so. He's gone. Yeah. It doesn't make any difference. His, his meet, spawn meet remains. the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. <laughs> he, Brad Wall has cited, had cited earlier on during this case that he would basically, before anything had really gone to court, that he would use the notwithstand. He was yeah, that's heavily right. implying he would use the non, notwithstanding clause in, our, in the Canadian Bill of Rights or yeah. Constitution. Yeah. And... Again, for you, for the non-Canadian listeners, the non- notwithstanding clause is essentially a, it's a way, it's a get out, get out of jail free card for when the provinces disagree with the, disagree <laughs> yeah, with the For when the government system. violates the charter essentially just rights kicking rights the can down the road though. Like it's yeah, not, it's just like, meh. Well, it buys you five years, right? It buys yeah. you right. five years. The and idea, then the decision has to be made in five years. Yeah. This, yeah. It's, um. What I was, from what I understood, at least before, is that it's supposed. To, the idea is being like, is is it too difficult for you to do today? So you're going to leave it. This does not sound like the way that Bradwell wanted to use it. He basically wanted to use this like, no, 
not doing it. I'll do it later. Well, well he, he would. Later yeah. If he had his druthers, he'd use the notwithstanding clause for forever, oh, forever yes. for the carbon tax, for <laughs> for prayer in the legislature, for prayer in the legislature, <laughs> for fucking uh, separate school system. Talking about Jesus and his Christmas message. For Seems all- like a kind of like I can't hear you clause. <laughs> like, <laughs> la, 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 la. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Because he's the worst. For all of you on Saskatchewan <laughs> listeners, I'm sorry he keeps getting elected. But not anymore. Now it's some he's, other jackass. Now it's Scott Moe. Who at least isn't Brad Wall. <laughs> that is a redeeming quality. That's, that's one good thing about him. Well, yeah. Now, now I won't have to see my my nickname on a license plate at the ledge. Mm, yeah. Brad Wall's license plate is B-Wall. That's oh. my nickname, damn it. Is it? <sighs> Sir, I don't know. I know. Your thank you for feeling my pain. <laughs> That's just like everybody. He's <laughs> 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 going to make another office space <laughs> reference. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> I don't think my brain that... isn't working as clearly as it used to. I'm sorry. I don't think Connor was even alive when office space was made. Uh, if he was in grade nine in 2011. I don't think that math works. <laughs> if he's 22 now, he wasn't in grade nine in 2011. No, he's 20. Oh, shit. He's just a baby. He's <laughs> such a sweetie pie. <laughs> Jazz is much too crazy. He can play it when he's old. Actually, I always know him. It's actually he, pretty close. He's too young. Because 2011, seven years. 22. Right. Put him at but he'd be 15. 15, which is grade 10. Well, if he, if depending on when your birthday is. Well, my son's in grade nine, and he's 14. Hey, let's not doubt our guest here. I mean, we're, whatever. <laughs> That's true. Well, well I, I'm just, I'm trying, to, enough, I'm trying to make him older. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> so you guys stop condescending to him. I'm not condescending to him. I just, it's not him. It's me. I just, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the evidence, like, poking uh, you in the face, like, Lisa's oh, I'm getting old her old lady on. I'm so fucking old. <laughs> Wait a second. Like, I'm like, I don't want to go see my doctor. She's like five years younger than me. It's weird. But like, I'm just going to have to get used to this. It's, you know, you know I'm going to yep. be like 80 one day. And it's going to be like, well. All the doctors are going to be younger than you. Someday. Is anyone here under 32? No. no. Oh. Okay, so see? one person. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. You knew better. I did. You're right. You're right. So you're a full millennial. You're you're representing. That's so, okay. is there anything okay. else to that's like that's the? Good. It's come back into the news now because the because government, of the payment. The, because of the payment, yeah, okay. the findings happen. Which is, for I now. mean, are you guys still talking about the news story we're supposed to be talking about? What's wrong with people? <laughs> Not for much longer. Don't I'm, worry. I'm trying to take it serious. <laughs> like it's my first time. Oh. Yeah, that's a mistake. <laughs> we don't take. He'll do better next time. We don't take <laughs> things seriously here. Oh, we try. Occasionally, but no, it doesn't. I'd say you try, Corey. Okay, I try, but the rest of the people, though. I'll take notes next time. I just need to get it the day before. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. This was a very casual invite. Quit sucking up to Corey. <laughs> I'm going to read next time. I'm going to next time. <laughs> I'll read my article I'm ahead of time so. and make notes. <laughs> I'm not going to read my article during the podcast while everyone else is talking. I'm Brandon. (laughs) (laughs) Time's coming good, everybody. (laughs) I don't knit or crochet. You know what? (laughs) While I'm doing a podcast. It's funny. We get get less downloads for the second half because it comes out the week after. But... (laughs) But I always, I always think that this is the more fun part because it's the more ridiculous. Everybody's loosened up yes. for two hours. Yes. And mm. I agree. But that's okay. We could just preface the preface Sandra- the whole podcast with like an hour of shots. <laughs> that would be fantastic, actually. But everybody has families and lives, and I had to have that's, to do that's week that's what obligations. All Obligations. When when the few times we've done the podcast from my apartment due to Dave's inavailability, I've drank a, a bit mm-hmm. during the podcast. It's worked well. But if I have to drive home, a I bit don't is drink a relative turn, Lisa, and we deal in absolutes. I, I don't drink that much because I'm in a pretty easy drunk. I only like a couple of glasses of wine and I'm good. We, we, we do need to have the like brainstorm gets wasted. Gets toast. <laughs> brainstorm gets toasted. 
Yeah, it gets toasted. <laughs> both, both of those. Marijuana is going to be driver? legal in July. Yeah, actually, <laughs> that should be our episode for the first week in July. You have to say it like Corey does. <laughs> yes, Mar- I'm going to get a contact Gio-wana. high if I come hang out with sorry, you. I'm Mar-go-wana. still going to get high. Even if I don't smoke it. <laughs> Shit! Don't give me that hard G. That's Angela's job. <laughs> you didn't ask. I'm not giving. Fine. It's all about consent. It's folks. all about consent. Exactly. All right, let's Thank do you. some. Let's let's start the uh, closing segments here. I'm going to talk about listener feedback. We have none. <laughs> <laughs> Give us some feedback, Lachlan. Come on, Randy. Yeah, Lachlan. I've been I've been emailing with Will, our listener that we interviewed. How's he doing? I super doing, like he's him. He's doing well. He's. Uh, I want him to come back. Yeah, hang like, out with us again. Yeah, we should have him back on again. It was it was a lot of fun. Uh, Randy Lamonda uh, has talked on, on Twitter a bit and uh, on the Facebook page and in the Facebook group. Uh, the he mentioned that uh, Dan Errol and our former and our guest Marianne should get to know one another. They would probably enjoy speaking to one another because she talks about collective action and Dan is a communist. Or a socialist or whatever the word is for that now. I can see where this would go. <laughs> so, he wants to overthrow the government. I'm with him. I think I missed that portion. <laughs> I'm, I'm down for that. I think he's, he's over the punching Although Nazis for now. The, the, U, the U.S. government requires far more overthrowing than ours does at this point. Yes, I agree. It's because they elected a pumpkin. Also, he really liked the book choice, which was fantasy land and said that it's awesome. <clears throat> oh, yay. Uh, we got a pretty f- silly comment on our YouTube channel talking about climate change being a scam and carbon tax oh, being a way to take money from the workers and Ew. give it to the wealthy. So that was interesting. <laughs> Crickets? I, I couldn't get anybody re- to actually spend time arguing with that kind of nonsense. Nope. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just kind of like hard pass. Ah, yeah, no, it's not a tax that's only used to attack it. Yeah, legally, it is not a tax. <laughs> uh, Leo did a really good breakdown of it last episode. He did. Carbon tax versus I learned things. Uh, uh, cap and trade. Uh, we're still looking for questions for the AMA episode, which is going to be at the end of March. So send them in via brain, mail at brainstormblog.net. I have some questions. Okay, Angela you has questions. You your sex life is better before or after you cho- move to atheism. Okay, well, that's, that's a, we'll save that for the AMA episode. It didn't episode. say anything. That's yeah, what that's absolutely. A, the AMA. second A stands for. AMA. I'm, I'm, kind, I'm here as you a gotta, former listener and now participant. You have to send it in, though. You can't just say Not with it. Not my phone, I can't. I if you can't, say it, it turns well, no. into electricity and it's gone forever. <laughs> you gotta write it the that's fuck down. New, that's a new woo. I didn't know. It. <laughs> what, what's, 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 no, she's right. His microphone is cooked. Is hooked up. To, and then then it's gone forever. Signal. Like that's, well, then gone for the person. Not true. We're recording. It's like but. magic. Like you say it, and then it's gone. What's your mailing address so I can send you snail mail? P.O. Oh. Box <laughs> one zero zero five zero. Is that just your P.O. Box? I'm not putting my address on For Janice Saskatchewan. <laughs> Actually, it's five. There are days I tempted, R. though. Just to be like, okay, what could possibly all happen? right, trolls, let's go here. Yeah. You'll never run out of Bibles for the rest <laughs> of your life. Dox me, dox me. Bring it, fuckers. <laughs> no, don't dox me. <laughs> Please, no. Every, everything about me is public. There's no doxing me, so. Except for uh, your social insurance number. Except for that. Or where I work. <laughs> <laughs> but they don't care anyway, apparently. So uh, make sure you join the Facebook group. It's the Brainstorm Podcast Discussion Group. Uh, it's for all listeners and friends of the show and to just chat and discuss a variety of topics and build a community around the show. Talk about your feelings about our show. Or... Other shows. Your feelings. Was there a comma there I missed? Other shows too. Or other shows. 
All right, Patreon. No new patron news. Everything seems to be going smoothly. They uh, haven't changed their fucking weird, their setup at any time. They're not screwing $1 patrons or anything like that. Uh, this episode might not be out as fast as usual uh, for patrons because... Corey's going to Vegas. Well, no, this week I ha- my daughter has a cheer competition. Oh! So Vegas is after our next broadcast. Nice. Yeah. Have you ever been there? Yeah, twice. I don't like Vegas. Uh, it's it's a vacation in a warm spot that's cheap. Oh, warm. <laughs> you know, I've only ever been to Vegas alone. Vegas sucks alone. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. No, I'll that go to suck. Vegas with you, Lisa. Fuck yeah. But I'm not going to drink and I'm not going to gamble. Okay, I don't now gamble. you just wrecked it. What, will, what the fuck is the I point? I will eat and I'll go to the <laughs> wax museum, but oh, that's hey, it. We'll go to a show. <laughs> we'll go see the naked, the naked um, I don't give Cirque a fuck about it. And and oh and the, and and the thunder I'll from down Cirque under Dis- the no, guy strippers. Come on, about, no, you can well, go. Look at the tower. I'm not going <laughs> without you. <laughs> she just went from I'll go with you to you can go alone. <laughs> I'll go. I'll sleep in the hotel room and then I'll find you. I'm fucking bring my nana and she'll go to the thunder bring your down nana with me for that one. I want video. Oh good. I'll get it. So a huge thanks to our top financial supporters, Lachlan, Daryl, Aaron, Lisa, Rob, and Positively Skeptical. Thanks, Lachlan. We have no new reviews, so we really appreciate your reviews on our iTunes or Facebook page or pretty much anywhere. I, I do quite a bit of searching around to make sure that nobody's reviewed us and I didn't and I missed it. So if you've I'll, – I'll even read mean reviews. You should check out see if we're on Reddit. Yeah, I don't think we are. <laughs> I feel like I should post on Reddit just for you to find. Yeah, that's right. Easter's coming. I'm bright. All right. Plugging stuff. Dave. <laughs> Why is it me? Because <laughs> you're the you're one the doing only this one. stuff. No one else is doing you're it. You're the one who does things. Um, if you have a script, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Um, that movie talent that I scored right. is still playing at the Rainbow. Got carried over for another week. <gasps> nice. Uh, yes. Here in Regina for the next week. And then it's starting in Saskatoon Rainbow uh, next Friday, I think, February 9th. Cool. Be there for week two. So. And you did the whole, did you do the score for that I one? I did the score and I was kind of like a music director and a little bit, like I did a little bit of that organizing. Um, yeah. And That's then really I, and cool. I, I did all the location audio too, like I recorded the film. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't mix it. I just uh, did the score at the end. Nice. Is that under the lantern? Because uh, well, they have that other like Studio Lantern or yeah, something. Stu- that's Studio Rainbow Seven is is the technically yeah. the theater it's at, but I mean it's yeah, it's Rainbow. It's just it's just, it's the more expensive Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's not too bad. <laughs> I think it's know. like it's like it's like I don't know, it's ten bucks or something. So wait, it's Sas- still pretty good. Saskatoon has a Rainbow. Yeah. Now who copied who? No, it's a franchise. I know, but whose oh. was first? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I have no That's idea. A question I can't remember. I think they were kind of at the same time, actually. Like I They're think they really were really close. Mm. They spread. They spread out quick. All right. But yeah, so I have that and. Um, that's, I think that's the main thing. Yeah, I don't know. Cool. There's probably yeah. other things, but... Oh, Sask Fashion Week, if you want to check out the promo video online. Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Right. I yeah, saw you working on that. Stuff I, on I that. scored that as well, so nice. just Google Sweet. that. I'm totally checking that out. Anyways. I, I've heard good things about talent. Yeah, it's not bad. It's it's, it's pretty cool. Good, good. No, I I, uh, I was on the By Any Means podcast with Trav Mamone. Cool. Yeah, talked about uh, skepticism and some social justice stuff. I've, I, I keep forgetting to mention it, but I have been on Reason Revolution like two times, I think. Oh. Uh, first time I talked to uh, Justin about some uh, kind of differences we had between the left and the center. And uh, then the second time around, we talked about how he was moving further left and away from the center. And then uh, I tried to explain anarcho syndicalism to him which is i mean pretty complicated but i tried to break it down pretty good uh it was a lot of fun and i think that's kind of all the places i've been that's pretty sweet i i forgot to mention them before so i figured i better mention them now 
Yes. That's what counts. Okay, I'm going to do this book ex- excerpt. I uh, I want to uh, give a bit of a content warning. There's some language in this that is offensive. Uh, it's from the book White Rage by Carol Anderson, and it discusses the backlash towards progress made by African Americans by white people. Uh, the segment I'm going to read is from a section discussing, discussing what is known as the Great Migration, uh, which is a period of time from 1916 until as recent as 1970 when people, black people were moving out of the southern U.S. and into the northern and northwest. And I think, I think that's all the background you need, so I'm just going to read this. While the migration had led to nearly exponential growth in the number of African Americans who called Detroit home, the area where they were supposed to live, Black Bottom, had never expanded. Realtors, insurance agents, banks, and landlords had devised a witch's brew of schemes and machinations such as redlining and restrictive covenants to cordon off wide swaths of Detroit's housing stock from African Americans and carve a color line through the city. And so the small stretch of land called Black Bottom became engorged with 10 times the number of people it once held. Less than half the homes in this ghetto in the making had indoor plumbing, although the indoor, although the urban north in the urban north, a bathroom was the norm. More than 15% of families were forced to live in one-bedroom apartments. Nearly one-third of all black families were crammed into four-room be- four homes, but despite the clearly debilitating and disastrous effects of this brutal reality, Michigan's Supreme Court, relying on the precedents of Crook- Crookshank, the civil rights cases, and Plessy, upheld racially restrictive housing policies as constitutional in Parli- Parmalee, v morris in 1922 tired of the cramped living conditions and exasperated with paying exorbitant rents for ramshackle housing that the landlords refused to repair black professionals sought to move away from black bottom this aspiration however was fraught with danger while a few managed to find homes in white neighborhoods others faced with the wrath of mobs and homeowners associations in the num- summer of 1925 for example dr alexander turner Dunbar's hosp- Dunbar Hospital's co-founder and head of surgery tried to move to the, into the home he had purchased in an all-white part of town, Tyreman. Within five hours of his unpacking his first box, brick, box, bricks and rocks rained down as a mob a thousand strong moved in to drive him out. With Detroit police officers watching, he was compelled to sign a deed and relinquish ownership of the property at gunpoint. The police then escorted Turner and his family back to blacks, back to the black side of town. Dr. Ozian Sweet, who was also on staff at Dunbar Hospital, like Turner, dared breach the color line in Detroit. It was unclear to him why Black Bottom had to be his only option. He had a medical degree from Howard University. He was married to a beautiful, sophisticated woman, and he was li- a loving father to a baby girl. Sweet, with his carefully trimmed hair, tailored suits, and tortoiseshell glasses, wanted a home befitting a man who had emerged from the abject poverty of the Deep South to become a physician with a thriving practice in Detroit. He was the embodiment of the American dream. On September 8, 1925, Sweet began to move into his new home on the corner of Garland Avenue and Charlevoix. It was a nice bungalow, perhaps the finest house in the neighborhood, though it was no upscale community, but rather a marginal white neighborhood in Detroit. Residents were not college-educated, There wasn't a lawyer, a doctor, or an accountant among them. There were pipe fitters, factory foremen, blue-collar workers. The next day, a mob, spurred spurred by a number of meetings of the homeowners' association, began to form outside his house. Sweet, well aware of what had already happened to his colleague, Dr. Turner, was prepared and had asked his brother and some friends to help him protect his property. He had first-hand knowledge of what a mob could do. When Sweet was a young boy in Florida, an African-American teenager who lived around the corner from him, was accused of rape, tied to a tree, and burned alive. Sweet had also been in Washington, D.C. during the Red Summer, 1919, when police allowed whites to rampage for days, slaughtering black people. The tide turned only after uh, returning African-American veterans had been sought, seen enough, polished their rifles, and began shooting. The next year, Sweet's relatives in O.C. uh, I might be saying that wrong. Florida, lived in the in the part of town that whites incinerated in the single bloodiest day in American political history. 
Whites went hunting for a black man who had dared approach the ballot box in the 1920 presidential election and in the process killed scores of African Americans and ethnically cleansed the town until it became all white for nearly 60 years. As a result of his experience, Ossie and Sweet had packed, among all the moving boxes and satchels, a small arsenal of guns and 400 rounds of ammunition. Sweet made sure to alert the police that trouble was brewing. Several officers arrived on the scene, but they hung back from the house, even as the crowd continued to grow. Then, uh, as the sun set and two of Sweet's friends arrived in a taxi, rocks suddenly began to pummel the home on Garland Avenue. Sweet heard angry shouts of, Here, niggers, get them, get them. As his friends rushed into the house, the mob was like a tsunami. Sweet saw a human sea, stones coming faster, Windows in the home shattered. Some of the men in the home, including Sweet's brother, Henry, grabbed guns. And as rocks continued to rain down, they fired a full volley, 20 rounds. Two white men went down. One, Leon Brenner, Brenner, Briner, a factory foreman who lived just across the street, was fatally wounded. The police, finally shaken out of their lethargy, sprang into, into action. They stormed the house, arrested Sweet, his wife, and the ten men who had come to his aid and hauled them out of there. Hauled them out of there. The Sweets were clearly in trouble, but it was the neighborhood association that had made abundantly clear its main goal to get rid of them by any means necessary, including violence. Almost the moment they purchased the home, notices for a never heard of before homeowners association sprang up in the neighborhood, inviting all concerned citizens to an invasion or to meet to a meeting determining how to act in self-defense and stop the invasion. The main speaker at the gathering was the president of the Tireman Homeowners Association, which had made front-page news in Detroit as it forcibly expelled or repelled the Turners and two other black families that had tried to move into his all-white neighborhood. We have the model for how to do this, he told the the throng of 700. Use legal means if possible, force if necessary, put the niggers out. Put them out. Then a mob, which the media and the police initially estimated to be anywhere between 300 and 5,000 people, encircled Sweet's home. Rocks crashed through the bedroom windows and sat on the floor surrounded by shards of glass. Other stones littered the lawn, porch, and roof. Racial epithets singed the air as the mob surged toward the house. The clearly violent intent of the mob should have saved the Sweets from the legal trouble that loomed on the horizon. But his aspirations, his ambition nullified, if not justified, that the intent and triggered a concerted response from the police. The prosecutor's offense office, the liberal anti-Klan mayor and the media itself, as they set to turn self-defense into a premeditated murder and throw 11 black people, including a physician, a law student and a federal narcotics officer in prison forever. The police officer in charge at the suite Sweet's home that evening, Inspector Norton Shukanecht, who had a ringside seat to the shooting, stated that there had been no crowd around Sweet's house on Garland Avenue. There had been people milling about, he claimed, chatting with one another, but nothing that suggested a mob, and certainly nothing that indicated the Sweet's were in danger. When he charged into the home after the bullets went flying, as he recalled, he yelled at Sweet, For Christ's sake, what the hell are you fellows shooting about? When the doctor pointed to the rocks shattering his windows and point, pounded, pounding against the roof, Shukanek scoffed. What have they done? I haven't seen a man throwing stones, and I haven't heard any commotion or anything else. In the police officer's estimation, Sweet's posse, for its own nefarious reasons, simply pointed its arsenal, took aim, and fired at neighborly whites out for an evening stroll. Taking into account the rocks that officers had found in the upstairs bedroom amid so so much glass, Shukanak insisted that the stones came after the shooting. His sequence of events, shots, then rocks, made clear that this had not been self-defense. Rather, Leon Brainier had been executed. This was the story the officer repeated to the press, to the prosecutor, and then to the jury, never conveying the impressions of his brother-in-law, who, there with him that evening, caught snatches of bitterness seething through the growing crowd, including someone saying, damn funny thing that the police wouldn't go in there and drag those niggers out. A report from the, De- from the Detroit Free Press.
who trudged through the rocks and debris at the suite's home. <clears throat> listen to the Shukinak, listen to Shukinak repeat the tale of neighbors walking the streets on a warm summer evening and add a tantalizing new piece of information. When the officer and his new and his men searched the home on Garland, they found nothing less than a full-blown arsenal, rifles, handguns, and a, hundreds of rounds of ammunition when the place was barely furnished. The implication, implication was clear. The house was, the, this was not a home where people intended on living. It was instead a sniper's nest from which bullets were sprayed into a peaceful, calm neighborhood, killing a husband and father while sending a, another man to the hospital. Shukinok's story was explosive, and the D Detroit Free Press ran with it and was quick, quickly followed by its rival paper, the Detroit Times. A reporter for a th third newspaper in town, the Detroit News, had also been there that night. Quote, a nigger family has moved into the neighborhood and they were going to put them out. Philip Adler heard a woman say, as he worked his way through the throng, Adler saw the, Adler saw the rocks rain down on the suite's home and then he heard the shots, contrary to Shukinok's count. Adler saw the suites had been under relent, unrelenting attack while the police stood by and did nothing meaningful to stop it. However, Adler's editor refused to run the story and instead, instead reiterate, reiterated Shukinak's version. Uh, there's quite a bit more. I'm going to end that there uh, because I'm running out of time. <laughs> but it's, it's a super powerful book and I, super, I, I really recommend everybody read that and uh, get a little bit of context on racial issues in uh, the u.s so <laughs> if we have time let's hit that outro music quick you can check out the show notes at the brainstormpodcast.com and our website brainstormblog.net thanks to our financial supporters the utah outcasts bassett will aaron daryl destin sucks lachlan lisa magnus michael nathan positively skeptical rob and stephanie if you want to join them and help the show grow, then you can do that at patreon.com slash brainstorm podcast. You can join us every second week when we broadcast live on brainstormradio.net. Our next show is on February 16th, and our guest will be Gleb Sapersky, author of the Truth Seekers Handbook and founder of the Pro Truth Pledge. Hopefully I can get those episodes out before we leave for Vegas. Uh, thanks to Matt and Phil for joining us. Thanks to Dave for our intro music. Thanks to Alex Kepper Murdoch for doing the voiceover for the intro and some of our ads. And thanks to Jason Camo for our outro music. You can find his stuff all over at lost, a lost state of mind.com. All music played is either with permission or under the SoCan license to play. For more information on SoCan, you can check out the music license info page on our website, brainstormblog.net. Remember to give us a rating, a thumbs up, or a fave on your podcatcher of choice. Join our Facebook group, like our page, follow us on Twitter and share the show and spread the word. For live listeners, stick around for our after show. You can go to brainstormafterhours.com and listen to the bonus content before it goes patron only. Thanks for listening and remember... The